CRA is taking back CERB money from some people who've already paid it back. Wildfires continue to rage across Alberta and British Columbia, but rain is coming. Quebec is illegally detaining inmates over clerical errors, and a majority of Greeks chose the conservative New Democracy Party. Good morning. It's Monday, May 22nd. Happy day off if you are off. Here are your headlines. First, we start with Canada's pandemic-enabled war on the poor. CBC's Darren Major is reporting that CRA is trying to grab more money from people who already paid back pandemic benefits. The agency has been using people's tax returns to settle scores that it thinks people still have with the agency, and in so doing, they've been clawing back money from people who paid their CERB back already. Major talked with one person who said she repaid her money last year and had her tax refund withheld. Sarah Dykeman was a supply teacher at the time. She had applied for EI at the beginning of the pandemic and was automatically bounced to CERB. When that happened, she automatically received payments as a result. The process of getting CRA to realize that she had already paid back the money has been onerous. Canada's taxpayers ombudsman says that he's heard from other Canadians in the same boat as Dykeman. He's seeing a communications breakdown between Service Canada, the agency that would have approved the EI claim in the first place, and CRA. Don't forget, Canadian corporations made out like bandits during the pandemic. Even my very small organization that was eligible for the wage subsidy has never so much as been asked to prove that we qualified for it. And yet, for individuals who received CERB, even if they received CERB because the government sent it to them because they had applied for EI, sorry, you're not businesses. They have no choice but to turn the screws to you in this country. Next to Western Canada, where wildfires continue to rage. There are currently at least 91 wildfires burning across Alberta, 23 of which are considered out of control. Smoke has wreaked havoc on air quality in parts of the province, but it has also blocked out the sun, which has had a cooling effect on the land and slowing the fire spread. Thicker smoke, though, also means that visibility has been really bad. Fire crews can't get a good look at some of the fires, reports CBC News' Murnali Anchen. Over 940,000 hectares of land have been destroyed in Alberta this year alone from fire. Almost 11,000 people are waiting to hear that they can return to their communities. There are evacuation orders in 17 communities. Thunderstorms are on the way, which is good news when it comes to rain, but is bad news when it comes to lightning. This past weekend in British Columbia, a new out-of-control wildfire has triggered an evacuation order in Quenelle. Since the start of April, British Columbia has had more than 200 wildfires burn, mostly in the region around Prince George. 85% of these fires were human-caused, says the government. British Columbia should also be getting rain this week. Next to Quebec, where Frédéric Xavier Duhamel from the Globe and Mail has found that Quebec has illegally detained hundreds of people over the past decade because of, quote, sentence miscalculations, identification mistakes, and other clerical errors, unquote. Of this group, 52 spent at least one extra week in prison than they should have. The numbers are missing information for almost all of 2014 and months of 2015 because they didn't keep track of this data during that time period. The mistakes were made by court clerks, the police, and quote-unquote others. Duhamel talks to lawyer Molly Ouar, who says that she had three clients who all lost, quote, months of freedom, unquote, due to an error made by a court clerk in Amos. Each of her clients was Inuit, a population that is jailed 15 times more than the general population of Quebec. Two of the longest detentions as a result of errors were 86 days extra in Quebec City in 2015 and 15 nine days extra in 2020. Duhamel writes that both of these stays happened, quote, in the same institution for the same reason, unquote. The most number of cases were recorded at the Bordeaux and Rivière-des-Prairies detention centers in Montreal. 
And finally, the conservative New Democracy Party in Greece has won a big victory over the Syriza Party with 40.8% of the vote. Syriza won 20.1%. The New Democracy Party was six seats behind winning an outright majority. Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis has the right now to decide if he wants to form a coalition or ask Greek voters to give him an outright victory in a new ballot. Each of the top three parties, New Democracy, Syriza and Pesok, the Socialist Party, will each be given three days to see if they can come up with a coalition to govern. If they can't, a new election will be held in about a month. Al Jazeera reports that this is the first election held in Greece since the country was under, quote, strict supervision by international lenders, unquote, who had bailed Greece out during its financial crisis. Mitsotakis first was elected president in 2019, promising to cut taxes and boost investment. He is a former banking executive. But after the rail disaster last February that killed 56 people, his popularity took a hit. Students took to the streets to protest government inaction that led to the disaster happening, but could not convince Greeks to turn away from Mitsotakis, especially not while the economy grew at 5.9% last year. Voter turnout was just 60%. Those are your headlines for today. It's Monday, May 22nd. Bonne journée des patriotes if you are in Quebec, and do something to disgrace the monarchy if you're not. I'll talk to you tomorrow.